Hello friends! In this video I'm going to customize the toy to be Lucy Lacemaker from Satellite City and the August View by Sam Fenna. I was initially going to make her out of a Princess Palace pet base, but I got a hold of these kitty cat fae toys that are actually really cute bases. This is the way the figure looks from the package. I got mine second hand and went ahead and removed the cat ears with my rotary tool. The plastic is that hard kind, presumably ABS, which is something that acetone eats so I can't use it to remove the face. Instead, I had to sand it up. I was already sanding a bunch in another project and I was all like, okay, and sanded this base so that the paint will stick better. I just gave her a coarse sanding, I wasn't too worried about it. Like I said, I was going to make her out of a Princess Palace pet toy, so when I made her accessories out of Sculpey Ultralight, I made them for that scale. These kitty cat fays are bigger, so her hat looks kind of small. I left the brim untrimmed so that I can fit it, so I'll map out the part that needs to go with a pencil and trim it down with a razor. While we're being edgy, I poke in some holes at the tips of her fingers and toes so that I can stab in literal needles to be her nails. Let's just say that I happen to have a lot of needles from some other project. One more prep thing to do is fit this tail that I made for her. I'll mark the space for the tail with a marker and compare the tail to it. I'll trim the tail where it's marked so that it will fit later. This is made with Sculpey Ultralight over a wire so it's able to bend. Side note, I recently found that Artmine's foam clay, the clay that I used in the tails video, doesn't bend so good after it's been sitting a bit. This is over just a few weeks and not even half a year or anything and I'm already finding that. I think I want for the hat to be removable. So I'll slip in a little magnet through one of the ear holes into her head. I glob in some glue and try to get it to stick. I leave these magnets on the outside so that it will stay there while the glue dries. I also make a patch out of this glue because I don't want to stuff the head with foil in order to patch the holes. When the glue is dried, I go over it with paper clay delight so the head is completely round. I'll carve out the right size for the magnet in her hat and jam that full of glue before putting in the magnet and patching it with a cap of ultralight, more glue, and the light so it's completely hidden. The magnet in the hat works perfectly, but the one in the head is now down here? I guess the glue wasn't completely dry before I took off the magnets outside. I'll fix it off camera, otherwise I'm going to map out the size and shape of the ears. I have a thin sheet of Sculpey Ultralight cured and sketch it to be on that. I cut them out and trim them and mark where they are going to be on our head. I'll refine that area and sketch in where the inner ear goes. We're going to come back to these later. Lucy's main fur color is white so we'll paint her until she's completely opaque. I use matte paint so that I can sand any uneven areas. Her hat has a strip on it that's yellow and that's not going to be easy to make opaque if it's over red paint. So I make a thin mask for the strip for when I paint it. I got a lot of footage of me painting her white, so I'll describe where she's from. The series that you can find on YouTube is called Satellite City by Sam Fenna. It's about this guy, Sullivan, that lives with these ancient monster things called Kivuakians and the relationship with each other and the world around them. These creatures are from before our universe was created, that event being the end of their society. Their current leader is trying to make the most of their situations with the beings on Earth and keeping the surviving Kivuakians alive while their former leader is regaining strength after being dormant from this event. The August View is the first part of the story from when their society was at its height. It gives full context to the characters in Satellite City and how they interacted before the end of their civilization. Truth be told, I haven't amassed anywhere near enough attention to actually look into it too much. Hopefully I will have by the time the book comes out. The community is pretty cool. Everyone is neat and supportive and incredibly creative. I've always been shy so I don't participate much at all, but it is a community that seems like a great place to be. Lucy has stripes all along her tail. I counted 15 stripes with red being the tip of the base. I roughly gauge in where they go, but I went in with a ruler and measured it anyway. I'll sketch where they go for when I paint it red later. As for her body, I'll map in her spots with a red watercolor pencil. For the record, I just keep using these pencils incidentally. Regular graphite works great, but I don't know that regular color pencils will leave marks or be able to be erased. The hue is just handy in case you can't get the markings off of your base paint. I use reference from her animation test to get what I really hope to be an accurate representation of her pelt. I also want to sketch in her eyes now. I tried freehanding it, but I really want for them to look as much alike as I can. 
So I cut out a template for the eye shape to use. They're a little bit lopsided at the end, but I don't think it's too noticeable or distracting. I did the same thing for the size of her irises, but I used a sticker so that they're completely circular. Use what you got! I really love giving my customs expressions, and Lucy Lacemaker has personality to spare, so I'm going to give her some fun eyebrows. She doesn't have eyebrow markings, but she also is in shape like this, so... This just makes things more fun. I'm painting a base coat of plain red where her spots are. I just want to make sure that they're opaque. I'll paint in the figure's little paw pads, but I'm pretty sure that Lucy doesn't actually have any. Almost all of the paint on her is either white or red, so it makes sense that her eyebrows would be too. Lucy's left eye has a red diamond shape over it, so I'll carefully paint the outline and around where her eyeball is. I'll see what I can do about defining the eyebrow later. Her right eye is red, but I want for the iris to still be noticeable, so I'll just paint in her sclera right now. When the base is down, I'm going to add just a tiny bit of navy to the red paint so that it's a little more intense, I guess. I don't want it to look too bright. Her head is darker red, so I'll paint another layer on top of that too. I really want for all of her markings to turn out with the same red, so I paint all the spots again whenever I paint another layer or have to mix up more paint. If I add too much navy, I can use it to paint the head. I'll paint her red stripes on her tail. Here's how she looks so far. I think I tried making her eye a different shade than her spots, but I don't know how well that turned out. Anyway, now I'm gonna paint in her irises. I already sketched where the pupils will go, so I'll just paint around that. The right iris is red, as I mentioned. Her left iris is light gray, so we're going to paint it gray. As I was painting in these base coats of paint, I was thinking about how I was going to add detail and dimension to them. I tried to paint a gradient in the gray and went over the red in an attempt as well. I want the center to be a little lighter than the perimeter. I broke down and decided that I'll just paint in the details, so I paint from the center outward with lighter versions of the iris color. I also tried to go from outside in with a tiny bit darker color, but that doesn't look great, so I go over it again with a lighter color. The red eye is going to have to be good enough in pink because I don't want the darker color of the iris to blend in with the slara. I let it dry over the time that I traveled like 45 minutes and wait another half hour for a job interview that went terribly, another 45 minutes to get home and through dinner. Well, the sketch of the pupil is completely buried, so I sketched in a new cross shape where it needs to go and will freehand it so I don't scrape off the iris. And they turned out like garbage. I tried to do the usual patch ups. There's not much outright femininity in Lucy's design. Oh, this is a cute cartoony version, so she'll get a cute little bit of eyelashes around her eye. I debated giving her lower lashes, but I like her with this look. I think the spots look a little too blurry, so I'm going to outline them with white to make them more crisp. I'll also fix up her face and refine the shapes and stuff. On her tail, I'm going to paint in some little fur detail. I just do it with white so I don't have to mix up the red color again. I like where that red is right now. I'm going to remove the masking tape on her hat and paint in the yellow band. Just make sure it's opaque, and when it's dry, I'll paint in the black stripe that the band has. Going back to her ears, I want them to have some dimension, but they really need to not weigh a lot. In addition to ultralight, I'm going to bulk up the ears a little bit with some aluminum foil. In retrospect, I either should have used less foil for this or just skipped it completely. The ears turn out fatter than I wanted. Sculpey Ultralight is a little weird. The kneading texture is similar to air dry clays like the light, but the feel is smoother. It's kind of challenging to work with and get it to look right on these smaller pieces, especially when the armature bits aren't already connected. I tried to get the foil to stay enough in place with Liquid Sculpey. When you mix Liquid Sculpey with Ultralight, you get a pretty decent kind of putty that you can use to attach things or spread over a piece for a smoother surface. I didn't show that here, but what I do show is how you get your pieces of ultralight to blend together. I had little tears in the clay, but the patches aren't blending on their own. I dab a little bit of Sculpey Clay Softener, or you can use mineral oil, and rub it over the clay and the patches blend right in. Q 
here they are all baked and cured. Again, the flat piece in the middle was a piece of ultralight that was previously baked and added to, and it came out completely fine and would have been flexible if it weren't added to with the extra clay. Uh, anyway, sculpting means sanding, so I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that off camera. I also carved in a little bit of texture to the inner ear. I'm gonna paint it the flesh tone that it's supposed to be. I do this before I paint the fur because it'll be easier to paint around than to paint it later. Her left ear is white and her right ear is almost completely red. I paint these in matte so that I can further smooth them out when the paint dries. I mix up the color and cover her ear. I think I went over her spots and stripes with this color too. I just want everything to match. So I thought about what I wanted for her hair. I think it's important because of how well it's animated in the series. So I used this white Build-A-Bear hair extension to make a few short wefts of hair. I didn't need a lot, just enough for at least the bangs and maybe the tips of the ears. Anything else would be extra and I'll decide on it all later. I used regular glue this time and let it dry for like 18 hours and they turned out better than my last wefts. So now that everything is about ready, I can get ready to put her together. First and foremost, I need to poke holes for the ears. I misplaced my needle tool, so I tried doing this with regular wire heated up. It was a challenge, but I got through eventually. So now that I have the whole set and patched the paint, I can give everything sealant. I'm using lots of water and DuraClear matte varnish. In this project, I waited until I had everything ready to seal anything so that everything ends up with the same finish. I would have hated if her tail and like one of her ears was way glossier than the rest of her. I'm just gonna add a bunch of layers on everything so she's nice and sealed and has a consistent finish. Oh, except her eyes. Those should be a little glossier. I'm adding it to the top half of the eye and the full iris because the eyes landed a little weird on the toy shape. I don't know why I said that she was almost done. She obviously still needs her signature smile. I sketch it first and make it a little wavier than intended just so that I don't have to worry about the spot on her eye. It works out fine. I use red with a little bit of black to outline her mouth and I'll go over that again later. I mix a little bit of red with the black so that the outline of her teeth aren't too dark. But I go ahead and paint a gapless grin on her. I had to use a pen to do this because my pencil was making the lines too bold. I wish I could have made them more needle-like, but this is gonna have to do. I'll refine it later in white, and I can use my pencil again for that. I'll also paint in her little lips. I almost forgot her ascot. I made one when I did her tail and hat, but I lost it. So here's this one. A couple coats of white to get a solid color. The spots are gonna be plain red. Hopefully that will contrast enough. Okay, now I can put it together. I'm gonna use hot glue to put her tail in. I bent the wire on her ears a little too tight, so I need to fix that. I don't want for them to slip out, but this setup is breaking things. I should have expected for this to go wrong. I also needed to make the collar for the ascot, and I'm gonna do that with hot glue, because the clay one broke and I couldn't find anything that would be able to be a substitute. I had to refine it with scissors and heat. I painted it off camera. This is what she looks like now. I asked my friend and they said the fringe was a go, so I put together the pieces that I wanted and hot glued it on. I found that I could break the fibers by basically scratching them, which is why the front bit looks quite so wily. I thought I'd be able to loosen it up otherwise with heat, but trying to boil wash the wefts just melted the glue that I used. At least I got the main one folded over so it doesn't look the worst, but the rest do. I'll forego adding these to the ears. Here she is all finished. I think she looks super cute. I'm still tentative about the hair, but her ears rotate and her tail is bendy. Oh, actually, I didn't put in her claws. I stabbed in little holes at the end of her digits again as they got covered with paint, which is why I forgot about them until I wrote the script. So I stab her digit and take a scrap needle and cut the very tip. I grab the pointy end with my pliers and push the blunt end into the holes. I do this with all 18 of her digits. The tips of the ones on her toes look like they were breaking, but it looks okay. I'll just coat them in a layer of straight red. Here's what that looks like. Okay, now here's what she looks like finished. Introducing Playtime Lucy. Hello. Take off his hat and he reacts. My hat is missing. Here it is. Thank you for returning my hat. Without my hat, I am lost. Playtime Lucy. Batteries not included from Thinkway Toys.